Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd do a winter edition of my in the bag, or in this case, in the cart. As you can tell, I have my trusty old Zuka cart completely outfitted, very similar to what it was in the previous uh, in the cart videos, but I've changed up the putter pouch um, uh, this time. I'm using the original Zuka putter pouch uh, because uh, it is lighter and an uh, issue I've had with this compact cart is the infinite uh, power pocket uh, is just, once it's filled up, it's got too much weight up here, and this is not particularly bottom heavy, um, so it's fallen back a few times, and I just decided I've had enough of that personally. Not that I wouldn't use the infinite power pocket on a larger cart, <clears throat> uh, but for this cart in particular, I've opted to go for a smaller and lighter uh, putter pocket uh, from Zuka uh, with the acceptance that it's going to hold only uh, two uh, putters and I'll show you more about that in just a minute but uh, I carry a smaller loadout because of this so I have to move most of my approach discs towards this pocket here and in the main compartment and then mid ranges and then fairway drivers and then I've got three distance drivers here so with that said let's go ahead and uh, start out with my uh, putters um, uh, many of you know uh, AVRs have been what I've been putting with for about I guess four years now I uh, was using exclusively DX putters for practice and for on the course for quite a while and then this year 2022 I decided I would go ahead and move up to R Pro rubber pro uh, plastic because it's a little softer a little more grippy and a little more durable and that's been quite the good investment so I bought five of these one that I put in my uh, cart with me and then four that I use when I go to putting league for for practice and sometimes if I'm out on the course practicing I'll move some of these approach putters and load this up with all five of the R Pro AVRs <clears throat> to practice putting whenever I get to certain uh, baskets <clears throat> when I'm doing practice rounds etc uh, the next uh, putter that I have the only other putter that I have in this putter pocket is the XT AVR3, many of you will recognize this from previous in the bags. I'd taken it out for a uh, champion, uh, for a star AVR3 that's a little more stable, a little more durable, a little more premium. But given this is a winter loadout, I value grippy um, uh, more than uh, premium in this case. So I want something mid grade if possible or better that's in a more grippy plastic and so that's what I went with this XT AVR. This I use primarily as a putting putter but I also use it as a backhand um, uh, putter, throwing putter within about 100 feet for touch shots because this is my favorite uh, putter and um, a very close uh, a second is the AVR3. Uh, I particularly like its flat profile so I use it more for uh, forehand and sometimes a little bit more uh, fade when I'm doing touch shots. Um, for a little bit less touch, that's when I go into this uh, pocket here. I've got three discs in here. These are all thumb, these are all thumb track uh, discs from Innova. This one is an animal in uh, Nexus plastic and uh, this one is a little slower than those in that I can throw it at a certain rate of uh, you know speed and it'll not go as far and it won't skid as far uh, it's less aerodynamic than the other discs and it's uh, just as grippy as those two plastics but it's uh, easier to manipulate because of the size of the thumb track and the the shape of the rim uh, similar to that uh, another thumb track disc you guys will recognize Rhinos, uh, the, the Rhino, I put that back in my cart. This one is not the purple one that I had originally. It's a newer one that I bought on clearance uh, at Walmart uh, in DX plastic, but it's a couple grams heavier, but in brand new shape. So the other one I used a lot for my upshots and just over time that DX plastic beat in a little bit and that original one was a little bit less um, uh, stable. But this I like because I can throw it and it, it has a much greater chance of fading and when it hits the ground it doesn't bounce around as much. Again, similar to other thumb track putters, it's not as uh, aerodynamic so it doesn't throw as far and of course with it being more stable in terms of the aerodynamic profile and weight towards the outside of the rim, it'll, it'll uh, fall to the ground a little bit earlier. 
The next step up from that Rhino is this Rhino X and XT plastic. Again, max weight, but even grippier, even more stable. And uh, this uh, I can throw flat and it'll, it'll definitely fade uh, fairly, fairly quickly. So I like this. Uh, this Rhino is somewhat similar to the AVR3. It's just slower. This Rhino X is somewhat uh, similar to the Champion AVR X3 that I used, but uh, it's even slower and it's much grippier than the Champion plastic in the, in the cold. So that's why I use the Rhino X. So those are typically the approach putters that I use the most. Now we go into uh, what I consider small diameter mid-range territory with uh, these three discs. And uh, uh, this is a Hydra and R-Pro plastic. It's a water disc. Um, so I only use it when I'm near water. Because my error rate is so high because I'm old and my throwing skills are not the best, it's highly likely that I could accidentally, you know, shank it or pull it to the right or do something weird with the angle and it ends up in the water. So uh, that could happen with any disc, but with this, I trust it because it floats. And this is also in the inside here, so it, uh, on the inside most, so it's not grabbed as much, but it's kind of out of the way. But the R-Pro Hydra, of course, here we are, the R-Pro Pig. I've been bagging a pig since really I, very early on. And I always, ha this is one of the essential putters slash small diameter mid-range that, that I absolutely have to have because I trust it so much because of the size of the rim, the shape, and how stable it is. It's not very overstable in the sense of the next disc I'm going to show you, but it's still pretty overstable and flies uh, slowly and it just, the way it feels and throws, I, I love it. I'm always going to have a pig in my bag. Um, and then the last uh, small diameter mid-range approach disc, whatever you want to call it, is a Star Toro. Um, this one here is surprisingly grippy despite being in star. So if it's grippy enough in star, and, and actually most of the star plastics are grippy, but sometimes they'll have like a, a gloss or sheen on some of the star discs that make it not as uh, grippy when you throw. Well, this is grippy. This is a CFR, a fundraiser, a custom fundraiser uh, disc by Innova. And whatever they did with this star, it is grippy. But also this is a great overstable disc. It's more stable than this pig despite not having as big a rim, but it's a little faster technically um, if you were to compare the two in terms of like the aerodynamics, but it is more stable. And this I absolutely trust to throw it flat and there's no way I can accidentally turn this disc. I, I have to really do something wrong to actually turn it. So this is a very trusty disc and I'm glad I've had the Toro. Next up are the mid-ranges. I'm down to four mid-ranges now. I had five and six mid-ranges at one point, but I decided to narrow it down because I'm just not throwing the mid-ranges as much as, as I, I used to because I'm relying on the small diameter mid-ranges or the approach discs for most of my approaches, and I'm stepping up to a fairway driver when I want bigger distance. So I've used these less often. However, uh, I've got the Star Maker 3. Again, this is a grippy uh, star plastic, so I've kept it. I haven't sought out the XT versions of the Mako 3 that are out there because that one does just fine. Uh, I've mostly eliminated champion versions of discs that I have and replaced them with grippier versions like Star, G-Star, R-Pro, etc. Here's the MD3 or the Mid-Disc 3 with the Metal Warrior stamp. This is the same um, uh, mold as the uh, Discmania MD3, the, the original Discmania MD3 that was out there, but this is the Innova produced version. And it's just more stable than Mako 3, but it's just as grippy, so I, I like it. And also you'll notice I tend to use like yellow, orange, red in terms of my discs, or pink in some cases. Well, typically the yellow ones are, are stable or understable, the orange are stable to overstable, and the red tends to be uh, very overstable. Well, next up is this Rock X3. So I jumped, you know, uh, from an MD3, skipping like the Shark 3 and the Rock 3 to the Rock X3. This is also star plastic and it's very grippy. And it's a little bit less stable than the Champion X3 that I have, but a little bit more stable than the Champion uh, Rock 3 that I have. So that's what I use this. And I use a Sharpie to, to <clears throat> make the side of the rim um, the shoulder, whatever you want to call this, red, because it's easier to spot in the cart when I'm when I'm pulling it out. But that I like is a, it's an overstable throwing mid-range, and I, I like that. New to the to the bag cart, whatever you want to call it, is my Discmania Mutant. 
and this one is a stable boy. It's more stable than the Champion Rock X3 that I have, but it's grippier because it's in this Neo plastic. It's very similar to Star in terms of uh, premium quality, and man, I absolutely uh, love this disc, and I, tr I trust it a lot. So now we're going to go to the fairway drivers, and you'll see here I have a little bit more fairway drivers than I normally carry, but you'll recognize some standbys here, some common discs. My Star Leopard, I've had this for two years or, or more, and I've thrown the heck out of this, and it's become a little more flippy over time, but I still trust it as a flippy disc to do what flippy discs do, to turn when thrown flat, do turnovers, or even as roller. If I'm going to ever attempt a roller, I'm just going to uh, grab this Leopard and use it. That said, and it's because it's so well used and it's also star plastic, this is very surprisingly grippy for a star plastic disc compared to other plastics that are out there. This is a brand new disc. Many of you will know that I'm now uh, bagging. It's a star it. Uh, this, it's just a little bit more stable than uh, that Leopard and it, it slots where my old Leopard 3 used to slot. Uh, it's just more stable. It goes a little farther and I can trust a little bit more than Leopard when I want ma uh, max distance for me, upwards of 300 feet. And then many of you will remember my ACE disc, the red S-Line FD uh, d from Dismania that I uh, bought in 2020 and used almost as much as my Star Leopard. Well, I finally retired it. I've hit enough trees with it and I've, I've nearly lost it a couple times and Sean's had to retrieve it once or twice. So um, I finally took it out of my bag. It, even though that's grippy and I trust it so much, I had to replace it, so now I've got this G-Star Hawkeye. This is even grippier than that well-used S-Line or Star plastic, um, but it flies just the same. It has about the same flight profile as that FD, so I'm using the heck out of this uh, G-Star Hawkeye. It's almost my primary throwing disc if I'm going to throw by default, with the exception of that Leopard or the It based on circumstances. I tend to throw understable to stable primarily, Typically, what I throw by default is stable, sometimes understable, or <clears throat> I'll move up to overstable, uh, to very overstable. And so the very overstable discs are almost never used or rarely used. And so, but one bump up from the Hawkeye or the old S-Line FD is my Star TL. Again, this is grippy, uh, modestly grippy Star plastic. It's somewhat well used, but it's just a, a touch more stable than this G-Star Hawkeye, so I'm still using this. Uh, a lot and I trust that when I want just when, if I'm throwing it into the wind or if I just want to further guarantee that I'm not going to accidentally turn due to improper form or whatever accidental angle uh, you know misrelease and then replacing the champion T-Bird that I used as my uh, beefy boy uh, for a fairway driver I've swapped out, that out for a G-Star T-Bird and this is a touch less stable and gives me something between that champion um, T-Bird and this Star TL. Uh, I just wasn't using that champion T-Bird as much as I would have liked simply because it was too much of a meat hook for me and my Star T-Bird was only a touch less stable but still significantly more stable than this TL so between those two I had to go with the champion but now that it's uh, drier, it's colder, it's winter. Um, I need something grippier and this is a little bit less stable and I've just been using it more and so that's got added value. And so since I don't have that that Champion T-Bird, I've got my Champion Banshee. This is basically the only Champion disc that I'm carrying. Very well, rarely use it, but for Champion plastic this is even more grippy than the Star T, uh, the Champion T-Bird that I've got and it's a little bit more stable. So for me there, there is, I don't need to have this and a Champion T-Bird if I've got this. So the Champ T-Bird is out, the Champion Banshee is back in my life, and for those rare shots where I just absolutely need a guarantee hyzer, or I'm throwing into ripping wind, or just absolutely need, absolutely need a guarantee that I don't, don't turn when I throw, or if I feel that I might yank it and it, and it pulls back, that's where this Banshee comes out. And then uh, last but not least in my uh, fairway dr uh, driver category, I've got the Innova Dragon. This is in DX plastic. It's pretty grippy. It's relatively heavy for Dragon. It's like 160 something uh, grams, maybe 160 uh, or more. And it's really grippy and I can put it on hyzer and it'll, it'll flip up. But this also similar to the Hydra 
Uh, I keep near water, particularly if I want to guarantee not going, you know, into it. So I'll only use that if there's water nearby. Now we go to the fairway drivers, I mean the distance drivers, and I've only got three. I swapped out my Star Mamba back to my G-Star Mamba. It's uh, five grams lighter. It's also in G-Star plastic. It's also slightly less stable, but it's still, for me, I don't want to say a beefy boy, but it is still a very straight flyer for me, and I, I almost never turn it accidentally when throwing. It's, you know, it's relatively unused. It's not beaten in, basically, even though I use it from time to time, but when I want to get absolute max distance that I want to get even more than these fairway drivers, this Mamba in G-Star Plastic is what I go with. Next up, my Mystere, which is just a little bit more trusty, a little more stable, and has less of a chance of turning accidentally. Uh, I can't get quite the distance as the Mamba, but it will skip uh, decently uh, when I throw it. And I can still get about as much distance as I can get with any of these fairway drivers, but with the added skip and with when you, th the thing is if you have a fairway driver and you throw it at a certain height, it'll fall sooner. When you have a distance driver, it won't fall as quickly. So if you throw it at the right angle, it'll go a little bit farther. So that's essentially why you want to use a distance driver, why I sometimes will use that G-Star Mystere. Last but not least, my G-Star Wraith. It's not as stable as a real Wraith like in Star or uh, Champion plastic. It's probably comparable to what you might get from like Pro, you know, the relative inexpensive Pro plastic, but I think it's slightly less stable than the Pro ones that I've got. But it's more grippy and it's still very stable for me. And this is what I like to throw. And so, yeah, those are basically all the discs that I'm, that I'm throwing here. Uh, the, this cart is roughly the same as it was before, so I'm not going to go into any great detail. Uh, but a couple add-ons that I've got here is I've got uh, first I've got a Bushnell uh, rangefinder that I think I've added since that last in the bag that I did earlier this year, and I've got the little uh, gray TPU case on it. I don't use this so much when I'm out with the others, but when I'm doing a solo round, I will use it. I'll bring this with me. Also, if I'm doing a solo scored round, I'll bring this Bushnell uh, Bluetooth speaker uh, with me, and uh, I'll sync it with my. Uh, with my smartphone, which I keep here in this putting uh, putter pouch, and uh, so that's how I'll do scored rounds with myself. So, and then of course I've got the umbrella holder in addition to the putter pouch. I've got my my rag here, and then all the various YouTube necessities that I need down here, and even tools to tighten things up for the cart. And then of course my my uh, GoPro and the Rode wireless mic, etc. So, anyways, that's going to do it. I, I hope you uh, like this. Um, uh, new, improved in the cart for winter 2022 and 2023. When things heat up again in a few months, I will upgrade back to the Star and Champion models and switch things around. And who knows, I'll probably upgrade a few things along the way. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already as I have more unique disc golf videos on the way. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.